yeah, thanks everyone uh, for uh, joining this Lunch and Learn uh, hosted by Portland OWASP chapter. Um, this is going to be a talk uh, uh, following up from last week's talk. Uh, so we have Wen. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for organizing this and um, thanks for everyone's attending. And my name is Wen and I, I am a current PhD student at PSU. Uh, my current research area is security. Um, so um, this is my first project and uh, this uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, least privileged CTF, um, which is an extension of the Thunder CTF. If you have attended the previous meeting, and uh, the, the 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 presentation was given by my uh, advisor, uh, Dr. Wu Chang Fong, and um, so. In uh, Ghana, reported that uh, the worldwide public cloud revenue in uh, uh, there's a 60.3 percent growth from 2019 to 2022 of the uh, worldwide public cloud revenue growth, and the trend uh, the growth will continue in, uh, at least until 2022. And COVID-19 just accelerated the growth. And this is a report done by Flexra. And they also did a report uh, for um, the top cloud security challenges. Both the enterprises and small business reported that uh, security is their top concern. And uh, here's one a cloud breach example from Capital One. So um, one of the, uh, the attacker, I believe is, it was their former employee, um, gained access of an EC2 instance, which has been a privilege to access their sensitive information to store on their uh, AWS S3 uh, uh, cloud bucket. And here's another example. Um, so auto clerk, their database hosting AWS has been, um, has was left open and which uh, leaked the personal, uh, some detail, detail, personal details of their hotel guests across the US. One of the uh, surprising victims is the um, DHS, the uh, US government, military and department of Homeland Security. And here's an example of Twitter. Um, this is in 2020. The uh, two insiders at Twitter abused their uh, Oprah provisioned permissions to collect and um, to exploit their uh, personal uh, information to uh, and reported those to the government of Saudi Arabia. This is a more recent example on Google Cloud. And, um, this is also about an open database which um, exposes 200 million Americans' uh, personal information. So um, Checkpoint and Cybersecurity Insiders uh, did a report in 2020, and we can, uh, these are the top four security challenges, and we can see there are some sort of IAM, uh, access control and identity related. Um, because of all these, um, we want to build a CTF game that's focusing on cloud IAM. Um, one of the reasons is um, we, we feel this is necessary because cloud infrastructure are so complicated and you got so many different uh, permissions like access token identities and you, you got so many different services. So, um, and also it's uh, different from traditional Lexi infrastructure. And, um, and right now um, they're incorporating with a lot of new technologies and services uh, such as Kubernetes and Docker container. And so all of these um, is making things more and more complicated and it's hard for people who, um, who's new, I mean, cloud is in general a new, still a new technology and people moving to cloud because 
um, they they don't want to uh, spend too much time on hardware and configuring network. Um, so this is um, very open. What's behind the cloud infrastructure is usually opaque to them. So, um, and because of this complexity, um, more and more um, issues are caused by uh, these kind of um, opacity and, uh, and, and the misconfiguration of IAM. So um, in 2019, the Devs Ops reported that um, only 4% of security issues in production are addressed after they move, um, after they move to fraud environment. So um, most developers tend to, uh, tend, tend to not change things once things work. Um, the, uh, that's one of the reasons that we want to make sure um, before they start using cloud services, they should learn how to um, configure IAM and uh, follow the best practice of least privilege, the principle of least privilege. And um, so our our uh, least privilege, uh, our I sorry, our CTF game is uh, is based on Google Cloud Platform um, because most of the exercises are labs, cloud related exercises and labs are currently available are AWS related. And um, also there are uh, only AWS flaws has, uh, has one that's in a offensive style, oh, sorry, in a defensive style. Most of them are in offensive style. And our game is designed in a uh, defensive style because we believe that um, it is important to teach them how to um, do things properly before I uh, learn how to do the attacking. Um, using myself as an example, like I, I didn't know much about C before I get into security. So I started to learn C, using C to do a whole bunch of weird stuff. And that actually confuses me a lot. And so I, eventually I have to sit down and spend time to, um, to, to learn by myself to, uh, about C, uh, what the original design and what's the original purposes. Um, so this is the uh, row of least privileged CTF and we hope that it will bridge the gap that we uh, mentioned before to teach a Google Cloud IAM configuration. And then uh, we hope it could be applied in a low state environment. Uh, so beginners uh, could easily play and cost very few. And uh, the third is um, we want to users or players to get some practice before they're actually moving things to fraud. The design goal of, there are five design goal of this CTF games. First of all, it's um, scaffolded. So um, we can see from, this is a screenshot um, of the, all the 11 levels you will see after you deploy the game. So the levels are um, incremented uh, by the difficulties of level are incremented slightly and um, so the first level is primitive row or basic row. Um, they were called uh, prim. Uh, sorry, they were called primitive row, and they later Google Cloud Google renamed it to uh, basic rows. Those are the historically um, created cloud, uh, Google Cloud Console rows. There are only uh, three type of primitive row or basic rows: uh, viewer, owner, and editor. And they contain um, thousands of permissions that cross services. So you have to uh, be very careful to, when you're using them. But most developers, when they start a project, um, they likely, they mostly start with owner role or editor role. And um, just because um, it's easier to, to make things work. And um, the second set, of levels are targeting on predefined rows. Uh, those rows are are a group of permissions, and um, there uh, there are Google Cloud predefined uh, 
uh, roles and uh, basically just a set of permissions. Uh, usually they are, uh, there are permissions related to the same services. And uh, for customer roles, um, there, uh, you can choose, they're just purely um, user created roles and um, you can choose the name and what permissions to attach to them. And, and those permissions could, uh, could come from different services. And, um, but unfortunately, Google does not support all permissions in customer roles. So for example, uh, database, the permissions and roles related to database are not supported in customer roles. And uh, the, the last access links are, sorry, is, a, is in link to the scoreboard, uh, which uh, we will show, we will do a demo later. And the second design goal is a differentiated instruction. So each level should provide uh, explicit and detailed instructions, um, which will enable uh, the beginner uh, which will enable uh, the beginners to get familiar with IAM and complete the level. So the goal for each level and um, are, are focusing on specific concepts and skills being targeted. Uh, for example, the one I showed up here is focusing on predefined role and the resources targeting is storage, um, a storage bucket. So the third design goal is immediate feedback. Uh, we have a, in, for each level, we will have a check function to validate the answer. And um, players will receive instant results uh, based on their, the, the role or permissions they choose at each level. And um, also if you failed and the, the hint will, will tell you give you the reason why the attempt might be failing. And the third, uh, the fourth goal is easy deploy. So uh, for our game, it's, it's uh, we suggest to use Google Cloud Share because anyone who has a credit card can apply for a $300 uh, free coupon to play this game. And um, these are, the all the commands that you need to run for uh, to deploy the game. The first first two th sets of uh, commands are just for environment setup, and for the game itself, you only need to run the last line of command, uh, the uh, Python three thunder py create uh, least privilege slash roles. If you already have the thunder CTF deployed, and you should be able just to run this the single line to deploy the game. And all 11 levels will be deployed with this one line. And it only takes four and a half, half minutes, uh, sorry, 30 minutes. And we do find that um, in some cases, when you deploy this in a, new def uh, in a new project, it might fail in the first attempt due to a Google Cloud internal um, error. Um, so, but it will automatically fix when you do a second deploy. And actually our scripts does, um, does that for you. So if you see it in arrows uh, within 400, 500 uh, error code, and just don't be panic and redeploy it, the error will dis disappear. And um, the fifth, sorry, uh, this is the monthly cost table. And if you, deploy the game and destroy it after you're playing, like we suggested, uh, you should, there, there won't be any cost for any cost. Um, the other resources we use are cheap and because of the coupon, the, we get the, the coupon and we are, uh, the cost will eventually be deducted and back to zero. And uh, the fifth goal is, extensible. So least privileged CTF is inherited the, um, the, and the main structure from Thunder CTF. And the, uh, the deployment is based on Python scripts in YAML. 
So it's very easy to add a new level. And um, you just need a new YAML file, which contains all the resources um, you need for this level. For example, a bucket, a computer engine, or, um, or the functions. And you also need the Python scripts to deploy those, um, those resources to the, the Google Cloud Deployment Manager. So here is uh, how, how to play. Uh, in how to play the levels. So in each in each level, we will have a a, a set of uh, a set of goals that are attached, and your the players uh, we would want them to add it the provided uh, rows and uh, added the rows or permissions. Uh, follow the best practice, the principle of least privilege. To, uh, to win the game. So on the, the, uh, the screenshot on the left-hand side is um, how you added an existing predefined row or basic rows in Google Cloud. And the right-hand side screenshot is showing um, how could you create a custom row and, and attach specific permissions to it. So, um, the whole design is, uh, the goal of the whole design is we want to uh, teaching how to use, how to configure IAM in Google Cloud. So there are three main parts of, of Cloud IAM. There are members, roles, and permissions. And members could be um, a Google account, uh, that's usually for personal use, or a service account, um, that's, that's uh, based on the name, as obvious as attached to a specific service, and a Google group. And that's for um, if you have uh, a set of users who uh, want to be, you want to grant them similar permissions or privileges. And the last one is a cloud identity or Chisu domain. That's for a, a whole company or, or a, uh, a business. So uh, for the rows, uh, the examples showing here are all predefined rows. Um, there are also basic rows, uh, which I mentioned before. They're only owner, uh, viewer, and editor. And the customer rows are not showing here, but we will do a demo later. Oh, I, I forgot to mention that uh, Google suggests to use uh, the principle, follow the principle of least privilege um, to mitigate security risk. Uh, that basically means to um, use the, uh, the, the minimum uh, permissions to like to perform, to perform, uh, to perform the, the whatever you want to achieve. Um, so Google Cloud IAM is to, um, you want to use an identity and attach a row to your identity. And then that identity is um, for, in, in our CTF games, they're all service account. So uh, I am, Google Cloud IAM, IAM will grant access through um, grant access to these resources list on the um, on the last uh, box here and through identity and role. So each resources would have associated identity and identity will have a, a set of roles or permissions attached. And um, this is an example. So uh, the table listed here are a set of roles and permissions related to cloud storage. So you got one, two, three, four, five, uh, five uh, predefined roles here. And uh, each rows are have, have a, a set of uh, permissions related. And um, so our game usually will start in uh, a, a row with excessive permission. 
So you need to reduce that, uh, follow the, the best practice and to reduce the permission. So the predefined road level usually will let you to choose the uh, predefined road with the least permission. So on the, um, the right hand side corner, the photo uh, is showing that um, among all these five, for example, if we want to list the content in the bucket, among these five uh, storage object row, the, the one that has least privilege is the storage object viewer, because the only thing you need to do is just to uh, see the content of the, 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 the content in the, in the bucket. You don't need anything else. And um, well, but this is still um, over, uh, this is still more than necessary because to view an object uh, content, you do not need get or uh, resource manager projects get and list permissions. So for that, uh, we could narrow it down further by creating the customer role and then just only attach the um, uh, permissions that you need. So to, to list what file in the storage bucket, you need storage list, but to view what actually the file uh, contain, you need a get permission. And so uh, we, we, uh, we, we applied this in the uh, cloud and security class in um, 2019, uh, sorry, 2020. And uh, here are the three survey questions. Um, so based on the survey result, and uh, students are pretty happy about it. So now I'm going to do a demo. And uh, sorry, I think I need to stop sharing for a while and now we need to uh, share another screen. Okay, that's fine. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay. So I already have it deployed and so, but I lost the connection for a while so I won't see the access link anymore. But that's fine um, because first I'm going to active the uh, the virtual environment, and and this is where you can find all the links to the to each level, and there's a directory start and there's a file rows.txt in it. So everything. Oops, sorry, I'm not in the correct directory. No, have this one. Um, so these are 11 levels and this is the scoreboard. And um, like I mentioned before, the levels are deployed with um, two functions. One is the access function, which will give you the instructions and, and hints to tell you what you need to do. And um, Here, it says load the check function to view the current row and permissions. This is the function that we use to validate the answer. So this just tells you the current uh, current row it is using. It is having an, uh, attaching an owner row right now. And these are all the permissions uh, under owner, owner row. So, so basically you have all the permissions. And um, this is a scoreboard function. So which also, it, it just lists the scores and the uh, level name. And this level name will take you to the same uh, instruction page. And this one uh, will take you the check function. So. Uh, I'm going to do a demo on uh, 
This one we define row compute. So um, this one says um, the account. So for each level, uh, there is a nouns number, and this is a randomly generated per user and per each deployment. So every, every time you redeploy it, you should see a different number. And you should also see the number on the uh, appended in the uh, level name and row name. And so you, when you editing or create, you should only focus as one, the one that has um, these uh, nonce number. And if you don't see that, that's probably not a row or permission you want to touch. Uh, we suggest to do this in a, in a new uh, project because uh, when people are, don't understand enough about permissions and rows, it's very easily to mess up the default uh, project account or, or, or service account. So you do not want to do that. Uh, you do not want to this game to affect your other projects. Um, so now we're going to look at this level. And this one says this service account. So each level will have a service account attached. Is it bound with an overprivileged predefined rows? And the goal is to find a predefined row with minimum permissions that's still enough to list the instance. So uh, we can see here, there is a compute instance being listed. Um, it tells you the name, the machine type, and the net IP. And actually the list will um, let you view more details about the instance, but uh, here are just some examples. And this is the code uh, copied from the uh, function, from, the, uh, from this access function. Um, this is the API call that it used to access the, uh, to list the items in the instances. So if you are an advanced um, player, you probably can tell immediately what permissions you need from this piece of code. And if you're a beginner and you can just follow these instructions. Um, so first we want to load the check function to see what is currently being attached. So right now it has the uh, compute admin role. And so we want to go to cloud uh, IAM admin and members to edit this uh, service account. So We're going to find okay. oh, um, okay. I am not in the correct project. I deployed this one in uh, in this project. So that's why I don't see anything here. So I need to switch my project. So here you can see all the, um, the permissions and, uh, sorry, the, the, the predefined roles and, and custom roles for each level and we're going to find the one for PD2. Uh, PD stands for predefined row access. So So we want to edit it. Oh, this is a check function, I'm sorry. So all the check function has a has sim similar rows or permissions attached. So it, it needs to check the, uh, 
the permission of the other rows attached with the first function, the, the access function. So, um, so this is a compute admin. And here's, I provided the link to the, um, to the Google Cloud Console. These are all the uh, compute engine related rows and permissions uh, from the documentary. You can find uh, the one with the least privilege that you wanted. Um, so I already know that uh, you could try try a couple times. The, the one you won't get score deduct, deducted for failing attempts, and. So because I already know what I wanted. I'm just gonna change it to, from here you need to type in uh, your search by the resource. Well, compute. This one. So, David, and now you go to the check function. The message will tell you you got the least privilege role. And now I want to do another demo about the customer role. Um, so, Let's do a simple one. Uh, let's do a storage. So this one is um, so this one wants you to list an object in a cloud storage bucket. So let's check again. What is the current? Row attached. So this is the uh, the current. Oh, because right now it has a predefined row attached, but for these these levels start with customer row. The name contains a customer row. That means it wants you to create a customer row and attach uh, permissions to it. So the first thing you need to do is to create a customer row. So this is the name we want. Uh, sorry, customer role ID we want. You, uh, we want you to follow the instruction to create an, an ID with uh, exactly that the same listed here, because this check function is checking this uh, customer role with this ID. If you create a different ID, it won't be able to find it. So we're going to rows. And we're going to create role. Um, the important thing is the ID here. The title is actually doesn't matter. You can give it a different name, but I usually just do the same. Um, And we want to find the one store related to storage. Um, let's try viewer. Yeah. Now we're going to um, so this one with the alert just means it's not supported in customer customer uh, role. And we will add it. Now we can come back to this function and refresh it. Oh, sorry. Uh, 
So we created the uh, custom role and now we need to attach the custom role um, back to the service account, to this one here. So it's CT, so CT2 access. Well, we want to click this three lips here and I'm sorry, we're going to go to IAM. So we have another row. We need to find custom row first, and from here, this is the custom row that we just created. Let's see. And we come back and refresh. Oops. What did we do? I'm attached to the incorrect one. I can do Oh, it still complained that there is a predefined row attached, so it doesn't like it. Mm. Need to delete this one. See? Let's see. So now it shows that you do have those custom rows created and these are the permissions attached, but it's not the least privilege. So we need to uh, reduce it further. Um, so I assume that we don't need this one. And because it's only need to list what, what the file, what's the file in the bucket, it doesn't need to see the file content. So I don't think we need the get function either. So we need to go back to the role. And find the one that we just created. We can delete these two and update. Now we get the correct answer. And yeah, I think that's all I have today. Um, do you have any questions? Okay, it seems like we might not have any questions. Um, any last minute questions, anyone? Okay, uh, awesome. Well, thanks, Wen, for the presentation. Uh, and thanks, everyone, for attending this Lunch and Learn session. Uh, so just a reminder, we're going to upload this um, recording uh, to our YouTube channel. So uh, if you're not already following us on Twitter or on the Meetup page, uh, feel free to you know just follow us. And then um, that's a wrap. So we'll see you next time.